What's good, family? Welcome to this episode of Stack Sats or Die Trying. This is the Bitcoin only show brought to you by By the Hood. I'm your host, as always. My name is Jimmy. I'm here for, uh, you know, um, a good time, not a long time today, but I do have some, you know, things to talk about in the world of Bitcoin for those tuning in for the first time. This is the Bitcoin only show by By the Hood, as I already mentioned, where we talk about everything in the world of Bitcoin, a um, little bit of education, a little bit of news, but just have great conversations about stacking sats and a stacking sats lifestyle because it is indeed a lifestyle. Today, a couple things I want to talk about, right? Let's get this pulled up on my screen for those listening to the audio. I will make sure that, uh, you know, I read some of this article so you guys can get an understanding of what it is I'm talking about. Shout out to the audio listeners. I appreciate you guys riding around, you know, sitting at work, listening to the pod, giving me feedback. It's all love, y'all. appreciate y'all so much. But this is an article from Bitcoin Magazine, right? And I think it's interesting because every time I see news like this, I want to share with you guys. Healthcare company, similar scientific, buys $40 million of Bitcoin and adopts a treasury reserve asset. In the grand scheme of things, you're like $40 million is not a lot of money, but, you know, it depends upon who you talk to. It's all relative. But I think it's an indication of which way we're going. Again, this idea of stacking sets and, you know, living the Bitcoin lifestyle isn't for now. It isn't for two years. It isn't for five years. It's a long term thing. It's not about getting rich quick. It's about getting poor slow. So similar scientific. Right. And they are traded on the Nasdaq under the ticker symbol SMLR. Um, you know, and by the way, I checked them out before I came on a little bit less than 30 bucks a share. And they did have a little jump when they announced this, uh, but they're known for healthcare solutions to combat chronic diseases. But they've announced a significant shift in their treasury strategy. The company's board of directors has adopted Bitcoin as its primary treasury reserve asset, alongside a substantial purchase of 581 Bitcoin for an aggregate amount of 40 million, inclusive of fees and expenses. So uh, they say that our Bitcoin treasury strategy and purchase of Bitcoin underscore our belief that Bitcoin is a reliable store of value and a compelling investment, said Similar Scientific Chairman Eric Semler. Bitcoin is now a major asset class with more than one trillion of market value. We believe it has unique characteristics as a scarce and finite asset that can serve as a reasonable inflation hedge and safe haven amid global instability. We also believe its digital architectural resilience makes it preferable to gold, which has a market value of approximately 10 times that of Bitcoin. Given the gap in value between gold and Bitcoin, we believe that Bitcoin has the potential to generate outsized returns as it gains increasing acceptance as digital gold. Wow, that was a whole lot right there. I mean, let me read one the part that was like, the, that's a bar when he says it's digital architectural resilience, digital architectural resilience, that's fire, <laughs> makes it preferable to gold. So what he's basically saying is gold has a, a larger market cap, but as Bitcoin continues to take part of uh, gold's food, so to speak, um, it has the ability to uh, have outsized returns because it is, in fact, the digital gold. Um, so he says, despite the strategic financial move, the company is uh, remaining committed to its core mission in healthcare of delivering innovative technologies as solutions to transform the healthcare management of chronic diseases and offer providers the opportunity to reduce costs and improve long-term patient outcomes. So it talks about some of the products that the company has. Um, but, you know, I think the overall premise and the reason I'm sharing this article is twofold, right? Um, I think that for one, it's interesting because, again, it's another publicly traded company deciding to put Bitcoin on its balance sheet, which in itself is a very powerful statement, right? Regardless of the market cap of the company, this is a publicly traded company making the strategic decision to do so. I think that right there is important and something that we should talk about as a Bitcoin community because as more and more companies do this, like it just adds to that network effect, right? One of the most powerful things in Bitcoin is, in fact the network. And I've always said this, and I've said this in previous uh, pods, the network itself has value. The fact that we have a community of people that believe in this asset, right? That is part of the value proposition of Bitcoin. I also think it's something else interesting about this article. The fact that 
this is just what they're doing with their treasury reserve, but their focus is still on operating the way they've been operating within the healthcare industry, right? You guys know I'm a real estate guy. I operate every day in real estate, whether it's through consultations, whether it's through sales. Yes, I still have a license to sell real estate, whether it's through me being a landlord, whether it's through me being a real estate data scientist and providing my opinion of value based on data. All of these things um, are me operating in real estate space, but my personal treasury reserve is in Bitcoin, right? And I say this because there are a lot of people who may be a truck driver, maybe a nurse, maybe you're a firefighter, or maybe you're a cop, whatever you may do for a living, um, that should be your focus. But the idea is to then make your treasury asset, Bitcoin or whatever else you want to save. By the way, anything that I say here, is not investment advice. It's for educational, informational purposes only. I am no one's fiduciary, nor am I telling you to buy Bitcoin or telling you to buy anything for that matter. I'm just having conversations as I do every week about Bitcoin, um, my my thinking on Bitcoin, my strategies on Bitcoin, and Bitcoin news. So that's what this is about. But what I'm saying is the idea is you don't have to necessarily go work in Bitcoin. A lot of people say, I got to go work in Bitcoin. I understand that because when you go through the matrix and you and you and you have that moment of uh, really going down the rabbit hole, you want to work in this space. And that's a beautiful thing. But if you provide more value by being a nurse, right, there's some nurses out there who are amazing at their job. Right. Beautiful people. Bedside manner is amazing. They understand the medicine. They understand how to handle patients. And if that's where you provide the most value, you go provide that value and then you save in hard money. That hard money is Bitcoin figure out where you provide the most value, right? If you provide value as a professional athlete, as a, as a singer, as a musician, as a chef, whatever it may be, the, you should still focus on improving your skills in those areas and then saving in the hardest money possible. Because as I mentioned, Bitcoin is not about getting rich quick. Have some people gotten rich quick? Absolutely. But that's not what it's about. It's about getting poor slow. It's about fighting inflation. It's about having the hardest money ever created, ever known to man. And I truly believe that, but I also truly believe in providing value, right? And some will say, well, Jimmy, you rent property. You're doing nothing but rent seeking. So that's one way to look at it. And I've, I've had a deep thought about that. But I also look at the, the communities in which I serve. I provide a service as a landlord. The people that I rent to um, are people that need affordable housing that is not provided by the government, that's not provided by private companies. So I fit a unique niche. Our company is by the hood, right? We believe in we believe in black wealth and we believe in, 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 in you know, doing for self, like do for self as, 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 you know, we were taught as kids, like we do for self. And that means that I look into my, my personal community, I see a need, which is housing, and I fill that need by providing not only uh, properties for them living, but quality properties, right? I am not a slumlord by any stretch of the imagination. I invest back into my properties and I think that it's important to do so, to not be a slumlord, but also I think that everybody deserves um, a home. Do I want to wait for the government to do it for my people? Absolutely not. Me and people like me go out and provide this quality housing. So I provide a service. I do provide value, right? I know a lot of people look at landlords as just being scum of the earth, um, but there's a difference between being a quality landlord and also a good person and being a slumlord. Because one of the things that I pride myself on more so than anything else, it has nothing to do with YouTube. It has nothing to do with any sort of assets I've accumulated is literally being a good person. Right. When I get up in the morning, that's my objective. Um, I want to be a good husband. I want to be a good member of the community and be a good person, because I feel like the more I give and the more I pour into other people, the more that comes back to me. Like, I, I truly believe that I live that. Um, so providing quality housing and, and, and being a good landlord and educating is like part of my mission and what I'm going to do with my time on this earth. I say all that to say, again, you know, how I get on this show, y'all. I, I get into my bag because I love Bitcoin. I love these conversations because Bitcoin allows you to have conversations about other things. Um, so, you know, I'm rambling right now, but it's, you know, just, it's just just, you know, releasing my thoughts to you guys. I, you know, I appreciate my family from Stack Sats that watch this every week. Uh, and I also want to just make sure I share great information with you. Something else that I want to share. How this gentleman actually reach out to me on Twitter because I refuse to call it X. I will never call it X. Elon, I don't care what you do. I'm never calling it X. Um, but it's a gentleman. I want to share his uh, his Twitter handle, right? This is not paid promo. I'm doing this just off the strength because when I find good things, I like to share them with our audience. It's a gentleman on uh, X or Twitter who goes by the name of Quest underscore BTC. So we follow each other and I was checking out his content. He's an enthusiast 
sharing insights and analysis about Bitcoin. So he's a Bitcoiner, right? So when I find good followers like this, something else I want to do is I find, and it's not about just the guys who are like uber popular with a hundred million uh, followers already, right? You know, none of the Jack Dorsey's who everybody knows is a, a huge Bitcoiner. I like to find the people who are doing good work, um, who might be, many people may not know about, but this guy right here, he, uh, you know, and I'm also being someone who is a data scientist. I, I find his content fire for one, you know what I'm saying? And also informative, right? So let's take a look at a couple of his posts and I want to make sure I share this, uh, um, go go give the guy a follow. Go tell him that you heard it from this show here. Um, but what he does is he he looks at actual data. Um, and I think it's important because I can sit there and tell you my feelings all day long. Right. But data is greater than feelings. It is what it is. Right. So here's a post that he put up. It says year to date, Bitcoin long term holders are outpacing whales as their supply shows a steady increase compared to the relatively constant number of whales. And he gives you an actual chart and data that you can follow along with. Right. So, you know. It's maybe hard to see on this video. If you're listening, you obviously don't know what I'm talking about. But there's a gentleman on Twitter, and I will put his uh, his Twitter uh, link um, in the description of the show. But it's basically uh, at Quest underscore BTC. So that's something I want to bring to the show. Other people, not just Quest, but Quest is the first one I want to feature. A guy who provides quality. Again, this is value, right? He provides value. I want to share the value with you guys. Value for value is a thing in my world. So um, I want to make sure I bring uh, bring you guys high quality um, content creators who are in the space, who I learn from and whose information I get. Because one thing for me is to come here and, and regurgitate information, but I want to show you the source in places where I get the information. Um, so he's looking at Glassnode, which is another place that provides data, but he's doing an analysis of the data. Uh, but it shows that, you know, long term um, holders like Bitcoin, people are bought in. They're not selling. Right. Um, and he has a lot of different charts with a lot of different data. Um, this one right here from May 28th, it says Bitcoin addresses with balances of 1 million or more are constantly outpacing those with 100K or more. So people are stacking. People are building wealth. Right. Look at that number. Right. In the green, it shows the addresses with more than a million dollars in Bitcoin and blue addresses with, you know, greater than 100K. And, you know, so this is this is showing the growth of, you know, our beloved Bitcoin. Um, I'll share a couple more of his charts, but you guys get the point at this point. He takes uh, data, a lot of times provided by Glassnode or other folks, and he breaks it down and does an analysis of that data. Um, and I think he provides a great value, so I want to share that with you guys. Uh, so, you know, it's all kinds of charts that he does, um, but I take a look every day to see if he dropped anything new. Like, you know, obviously it's not something new every day. This right here, he did an analysis of uh, NVIDIA versus Bitcoin on um, six months, right? So, OK, you know, you, you're, you're making the decision of, you know, how has it performed over the last six months? You can take that look. Um, and it's just so much. I could be here all day showing um, just the value that this guy provides. But that's something I want to bring to you guys on Stack Sats or Die Trying, because, you know, you guys know I talk about Bitcoin Twitter often. Um, so as I'm on there and I find some of these, uh, you know, people in the Bitcoin community that provide value, I want to make sure that I share them with you. So. Just to wrap up today's show, like I said, a quick show, nothing long, you know, but I'll make, I want to make sure I drop something every Monday. Um, first thing is watch how many companies start adding Bitcoin on their balance sheet, um, being very transparent by the hood. Right. Our LLC, our company, myself and my partner, Corey, um, we're an investment company outside of the content and create and outside of the community work we do. We take our resources and we put them into Bitcoin. Right. Um and when I say we put them into Bitcoin, I mean 100 percent into Bitcoin. We have no stocks as a, as a company. Our entire reserve is put into Bitcoin, with the exception of we do invest in an overall um, my investment group. So you guys know that I am part of an investment group known as IB Big. Um, I invest in there personally, but also by the hood has equity in that company. That's by the hood's entire treasury, Bitcoin and equity and IB Big. Right. That's just being transparent. Right. Um so we already adopt this. Now, are we a listed company on NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange? Absolutely not. I mean, that's not even our goal. That's not, we never even thought about that. Our goal is to provide value to the community, but also to have a company that's self-sustaining. And by doing that, part of any income that we make, we must save. Um, we believe that individually and we believe that as a company. So yes, our company is also investors. Um, but, you know, just to kind of wrap the show up, I think it's important to, to acknowledge that, but also what the gentleman said who runs the company. 
his focus is still in healthcare. His focus is providing quality, quality experiences within the healthcare sector. But as he makes the, the as he provides that value and gets back value, this is where he's going to store his money. That's a lesson in something that we can do um, individually, as companies, as nonprofits, as entities. We can take the value we provide and then take the value and put it over somewhere else. Right? Get poor slowly. Um, the second piece is. Uh, Quest underscore BTC, someone who provides value on Twitter. I wanted to share his content with you. You know, if you if you do decide to follow a guy or look at some of his content, make sure you let him know that you found it here at JW the Blueprint or at By the Hood is where you saw it. Um, but you know, and again, he didn't pay me for this. I'm just doing this on his strength because he has val a valuable content that I look at myself. And because of that, um, you know, I want to share with you and I'll bring you more folks uh, in the future. I'll make sure I uh, continuously as I find these hidden gems on uh, these various sites, I'll bring them to you. But um, hopefully I'm somebody else's hidden gem. <laughs> with that being said, give me some feedback. Let me know what you think about the strategy of focusing your time on where you can provide the most value and then using that to stack stats. Right. Let me know how you feel about that specific strategy. Also, um, let me know if you're going to take a look at the, the gentleman's uh, charts. He's a lot of great charts, and that's what he does. He's an um, analyst of Bitcoin. So uh, give me some feedback on all that. I appreciate you guys as always, man. Um, we didn't have our show this past Friday. My brother is getting torn up in Houston with these storms, so he didn't have power or internet, so we couldn't uh, do our live stream. Um, I'm here in Philly. I'm not dealing with that, but, uh, you know, didn't want to go dolo, but... You know, sometimes I do the Wednesday show dolo because like this this specific summer, he's getting slapped. They tell me like I talk to him. He's like, yo, power's out again. Another storm, another storm. I think I hit by like four or five storms in the last couple of weeks. And I don't know what's going on or who pissed somebody off uh, in that Houston proper area. But the, the, the Mother Nature is smacking them crazy. So send a send a prayer for my brother Corey and his family. They are our safe, which is most important. But they're dealing with having no power. And, you know, Cor Corey, the frugal man he is. I'm like, is the family safe? And he's like, yeah, the family's safe, but all my food went bad. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I'm like, bro, the family's safe, man. Like, I get it. You pissed because you, you lost, you know, all the money you spent on groceries is gone. But, you know, safety first, man. But send a prayer for my brother out there, man. Give me some feedback on the stack stats that I try and show this uh, specific episode, episode 17, the Chris Mullen episode. Um, hey, man, let me know what y'all think, man. I appreciate y'all. I love the support. I pre and, and listen, also. Um, next month, our free summer camp for the youth comes up. For those who don't know, we do a free summer camp. Um, this will be our 10th camp. Uh, kids ages five and up, completely free. We teach them about everything, personal finance, budgeting, how to save, teach them about Bitcoin, real estate, the stock market. And we do it all within a five-week span. Um, it's completely free. And, you know, so you'll be seeing those dates come out shortly. Uh, you know, been, been kind of like taking a little detox from social media, so I haven't really been on any of the sites as much as I used to. Every once in a while, I got to do that to stay sane, man, because it's too much lies and, um, and debauchery and, and nonsense on social. Now, I'm not going to say I haven't been consuming social because I'd be on TikTok like crazy, just watching the craziness on air. Um, but with that being said, though, love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Leave some comments, man. Share this video. But as we always say, we got to stack sats or die trying. Peace. <laughs>